Hi everyone, today we're going to be working on this Athern Genesis DCC Ready SD70 ACE, which is in the 1943 Heritage Paint. We are going to be putting in DCC and sound and showing you how easy it is to do this in a DCC Ready locomotive. I'm going to show you here, here's the sound decoder. This is a Tsunami sound. And uh, this little book is going to talk about everything on it. Along with that, you also need one of these round speakers. So we're going to show you how to open this up and then uh, put this in. You'll need to do a little bit of soldering for the speaker, but no big deal at, on that. And then uh, we're going to put it on the programming track and get it programmed. One thing I recommend that you get if you don't have one is some sort of locomotive cradle. I 3D printed this one and designed it myself. Um, I need to make some updates to it, but uh, if that's something that any of you would be interested in, please shoot me a message, let me know. I'd be happy to uh, give you the designs um, or even maybe print one for you. All right, so with your locomotive in the cradle, there's four screws you wanna take out. We're gonna start over here on this end with the front coupler. It works really well if you have either magnetic screwdrivers or a fine pair of tweezers like these. You can find a pair like this off of Amazon. You can get right in underneath, lift straight up. Set that off to the side, pull your coupler out to the front. It's often times that your coupler box will fall apart like that. That's okay, no worries. Don't even worry about that. Here, we'll put that back together later. You can just set that off to the side. I usually move then to the rear coupler and do the same. And I also will have a tendency to set these kind of left and right. Uh, so rear's over here, front's over here behind, which you can't really see. And the next two screws are actually underneath the edges of the truck. And if you kind of move that over, you can kind of see that one right there. This is where it comes in handy to have a really long, thin one. These are like jeweler screwdrivers. That's something that's really gonna help you out in the long run. Just like that, pull that out. The other one is basically in the same place on the front, right here. Almost. There we go. Now, you want to gently pull the shell off of the locomotive. My bad. I set that on everything. Just straight up. Like that. I usually flip this over and lay it on its top, but there's a good look at how that's wired ditch lights, headlights, everything like that. We'll just flip that over on its top right there. If you feel like installing additional lights, this is always a good time to do it. There's a lot of extra room in here. It might be something that I do eventually, but not for this one. We're gonna just leave that blank. So a few things to note. This is where your speaker goes. That's why we got the round speaker. The decoder is an 11 pin decoder that goes right here. This is a dummy board, is what they call it, that you pull off. And basically all it does is light control. And uh, then uh, these are all of your lights. You can see your lighting outputs. And uh, here we go, just like that. Then we uh, all we gotta do is take a look and figure out where to solder our speaker wires on and uh, get that mounted over here. Give me a second while I get the decoder open and uh, give a, the manual a quick read through. If you ever lose one of these manuals, you can get on the manufacturer's website. They have uh, PDF copies of these and even more in-depth versions of these if you're looking to do something advanced and uh, you just get on there. All right, now that we have the decoder out and it's ready to go, it's always good to give the instructions a quick read through. I'm gonna slide this up here so you can see it. it talks about installation and wiring, 
how to do it properly, these only go on one way. These 11 pin ones like this, or 21 pins, excuse me, 11 pins do the same if you need support. And then here's programming. This is something that we're gonna need to know later. We're going to mainly need to know the prime mover and what it's supposed to be and program in the correct type. And same with the air horn that's on there. If you flip this over, there's also the function buttons on the bottom there, and that shows us uh, basically what's going to happen and what uh, buttons we can push to do what. So, before we get the new uh, decoder pushed on, we're going to pull the old one off. And this one, you just want to grab and lift straight up, and it will come right off. It's on there tight, so it's okay that it's going to be a little difficult when you pull it, just like that and you're up and off. It's kind of hard to see, but one of the corners is a blanked one that you can't put anything through, and it's this, this one over here. You can see it from the bottom, but not from the top. Make sure that your pins look okay. You don't really want to rock it or anything like that too much. You risk damaging those pins. You want those pins to be straight for when you put on the new decoder. Okay, we're gonna get our speaker out next, and get the uh, electronics wiring over here and get that in so I can show you that. And we're also going to uh, um, get the soldering iron out. If you haven't soldered, I'll give you a few tips on that as well before, if you haven't done that in the past, um, but we'll, we'll grab that next. Let me get all that. We'll be right back. All right, we've got the soldering iron heating up. It's over here. A few other things you're going to want is some of this. It's called paste flux. Get that into the shot. And some solder. It's pretty much what you want. Um, this one is fine electrical. That's probably what I recommend. Works about the best. The other thing that you want to do is you want to find some DCC wiring. Um, you can buy that off of eBay. I'm actually going to show this to you. This is the one that I bought from this GPS 97 trains. He sells on eBay, but there's his email address if you need to buy them yourself. Also, all sorts of colors. Um, I've been using this for years and it's lasted me a long time. You don't need very long because we're just going basically, let me grab this. We're going from here. This is speaker plus and speaker minus to the speaker that's gonna be here. So you really only need about three inches. You don't want to get it too long, get wires that are all bound up in here, hit the flywheels, or get caught in the motor right here. That's not anything that you want. You want to be able to kind of route it up and over the board, just like these are, and uh, have it out of your way. So, grab some red here. We're going to kind of rough, rough measure. Take and cut that. Just like that. We're gonna strip it. I usually do this by hand. If you have a decent knife, um, you can just kind of roll it on the edge of the knife blade like that. Pinch it and kind of pull it. There you go. And you'll have that nice copper wire exposed. What we want to do while this, once the soldering need, excuse me, the soldering iron is done heating up, is we want to do what's called tinning the wire. That means basically you put solder on the wire itself so that when you go to solder to the terminals, it'll stick. Here's that. Let me grab one more wire. This time we'll go, go gray just to keep them separate. And we'll do the same. I'm gonna take the ends. You don't need a lot on there. Roll it, pinch and pull. If you do that too hard or pinch too hard, you kind of will sometimes pull the wire apart. These are really thin wires. And uh, if that happens, that's okay. Just laugh and uh, do it again. Or, you know, if you made it too short, then at that point, find a different piece. Uh, but no big deal on that one. One question that pops up with wiring these speakers is uh, which one is what for polarity? If you refer to the card that's included, it'll show you. So that bottom right one is the positive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that up there. Just move this here so you can see it. We're gonna set that up there so that we have a point of reference, something to look at. 
while we do this. Whoops, keep bumping the camera. So next, this is what the paste flux looks like. It's nasty stuff. It used to be really toxic back in the day, but it's not so much anymore. We're gonna take your wire. You just wanna dip it in there like that. And then one thing that I recommend doing is instead of holding this with your fingers the way that I am, is you wanna find something that will hold it for you. Um, you can do tweezers or anything that isn't, maybe something that doesn't conduct as well. One of my favorite things is this. I use this in model building, uh, but it's reverse tweezers, so it's always closed, and you can actually lean it so it holds. The reason behind that is, is that soldering will heat these up very quickly, and when it does, uh, that heat will transfer through the wires and when it does, you're gonna burn yourself. So we're gonna set that like that for just a second. I'm gonna take your soldering iron, so you can see it here. You don't wanna to get too close to anything because you will melt things. You're gonna take your solder, and you're gonna put a drop like that right on the tip. Go under, just like that. That flux is gonna cause that solder to flow through the wire like that and now let me set this down so you can see it a little bit better the uh the wire is is tinned as it's called and it basically means you can just have a solid piece of wire on there the next thing we need to do is we need to do that exact same thing but we need to do it on those two terminals that we were looking at earlier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a toothpick. We're gonna grab a little bit of flux out of here, just like that. Put a drop there. And a drop there. There you go, wipe off any excess flux. You can use a paper towel as well, set that off to the side. This time around, we're gonna have the solder ready. Just in case we need some more, we're gonna set the solder on top and do that. And you touch it, let it drop off just like that. There you go, no big deal. Next, we're gonna do the same thing, but to the speaker. So let me move the speaker here. Oh, and you know what? You know what we forgot to do? So we actually forgot to do the red wire with that as well. So let me dip the red wire quick. Just like that. It's always a good idea to do this in a fairly well ventilated spot because it does put off some smoke and it does smell. All right, let's get our toothpick again. some lint or something that happens with that we're gonna do the same dot of flux dot of flux it's probably too much so we'll take some of it back off and kind of just put it back on there there you go just like that you really don't need a lot but this really helps when you're soldering wires or soldering any connections for that matter um, here, I'll turn it back the way it was. Because of it and how it is, we're gonna take and add just a hint more solder to the soldering iron. There's one. There's two. Just like that. And the next part is really easy. We are gonna use our tweezers again. And this time, solder there. You're going to hold it a little closer to the end. I'm going to turn this around so our picture matches. So the positive is down here. You're going to lay your wire where the solder is that you just put down. You're just going to touch it for a second and hold it there. You'll see it go real shiny liquid looking and then kind of glaze over again and you can see that that is now held. 
We're gonna grab our gray and do the same. I'm gonna turn this a little bit so I can get to it better. Just like that, perfect. Now we're gonna take the other end and look at the board to see where it says S plus is, which is this one. There we go. And take our gray. I feel like that's a little long. If you ever feel like the wire is a little too long, you can cut off some of the end or if you have enough room, you could bend it over. We're just gonna take a pair of thin snips like this, cut off a hint of the end. You don't wanna risk getting it too long, shorten something out if something touches it or crosses it. All right. Just like that. Nice and connected. Now, there are slip-on caps like these. They're over all the other wires that you can use. I prefer to solder. I feel like you get a much better connection out of them than if you were to uh, do a slip-on like that. So we are done with the soldering part. The, the best thing to do right now is to unplug your soldering iron so it starts to cool off. Move it somewhere where if you bump it, it won't fall off and burn you. Um, touch the model and ruin it or anything like that. So give me a minute to unplug it, move the soldering stuff out of the way, we'll move on to the next steps. So we're gonna put this back up just right where we've had it. Slide that screw in, just like that. And then we're gonna put the bottom one in and that'll work like a wedge to kind of hold it the edges in there will be good to go there just like that we will tidy up the wires a little bit when we're done um, we'll probably curl those up into the uh, locomotive but in the meantime we're ready for the next step which is the actual decoder so go ahead and grab your decoder it's always a good idea when we're handling anything with electronics to touch something that's grounding first. And the reason behind that is, is that you don't want to static shock anything that contains flash memory. And uh, these decoders contain flash memory. Let me set the back out of the way. Here's the decoder. Same thing as before. You can see that one of those pins is blanked out. It's this one up here. You're gonna take this, you're gonna put it right on. It starts to fall in and you're gonna push. You should see the tops of the pins right there, meaning that it's in there successfully. The next step after that is to close this back up and uh, we're gonna go put it on the test track before we put all the screws back in. But uh, give me a second to, to show you how I'm gonna tidy some wires and uh, move a couple things out of my way so I can, I can see a little bit better. All right, so what I did was I turned this over this way this will just lay across the top. You want to make sure nothing's going to touch this and short those out, which it won't. We're good. Now, as you tuck these back in, you want to kind of just guide them so that they go into the body. It's kind of normal that there's times that they don't. Um, that's just a normal thing with DCC wiring. There's always that fine balance between having too much and not enough. Another thing that I've seen other people do is make basically like quick connect or quick disconnect wires to do that. Um, that's pretty fancy. That's some really fancy wiring. If, if anybody does that, you are welcome to experiment with that. Personally, I don't feel like taking the time to do it. Okay, we're on. Let's make sure that we get this fitted over the speaker. There we go. The next step then, using your tweezers, so you want to make sure that these sander lines come out and go down like that and out and around the edges of your trucks 
just like that. So we gotta do that there, there. We're gonna flip it over. Do the same, except that one has to go around the fuel line. And we might need to work on that one a little bit later. That's okay. And this one we caught completely up in the body. If that happens, it's okay. Just lift your body off a little bit, grab it with your tweezers, pull it back out, put your body back down. Oops, I'm not, not getting it very well. There we go, just like that. All right. Let's, uh, let's go throw this on the test track and uh, I'll see you over there and we'll uh, give this a program and uh, see what happens. Okay guys, we're in here on the test track. We're going to go ahead and power it up and uh, we will start talking about programming. I'm gonna show you what buttons I hit as well. I didn't know that the sound already works. Okay, so I'm using an NCE system. We're gonna hit program here in the bottom until you see use programming track. You wanna make sure that anytime you program a locomotive like this, especially new, that it's on an isolated track, you'll accidentally reset everything. We're gonna press one for standard. It's gonna read the decoder. This always takes a minute. There's the manufacturer, here's the version, hit enter each time. Yes, we wanna set up the address. The short address is three by default. I can, I usually set these to the last four, of, or last three, excuse me, of the locomotive number, 1943, 943. But I, I use long addresses, so it doesn't matter. You can honestly set these to whatever you feel like. So enter, no, we don't wanna do that. Long address is also three, we're gonna set that. 1943 enter yes we want to do that i usually hit enter here if you hit the program button again you'll be back out back out we're going to go to cv so now we have to look at our sheet here i made a couple marks so the first one is prime mover selector cv 123 so we do one two three enter Here's the value. Default is that EMD 567. We actually need this to be eight because that is the proper prime mover for this. And the other thing we're gonna do is, uh, we gotta look at the uh, Soundtracks website to find the correct horn. This actually uses a K5LLA, which isn't shown here as one of the options. So we'll look that up off video later but we'll just program in the closest one, which is number four there, just like that. When you're done, escape. Here's your headlight. And I'll have to figure out what button is the ditch lights. There it is. And then we'll have to do some programming on that later because they are set independently. Huh. I hit the bell button and it shut everything off. That's okay. So we'll give this we'll give this a test here real quick. Um, let me get this powered back on. Sometimes this happens with NCE when you've been programming quite a bit. Best thing to do 
unplug that power cable, plug it back in. See how it forgot the locomotive number? I'm gonna do that. Huh. Looks like it has cab chatter and a bunch of other songs. I'll get those figured out with Rodin to probably a separate video. But uh, the other thing is, is I'm going to have to program that so that those two turn on at the same time. That's better. Let's give it a move. Make sure the rear headlight works. I'm going to step around. It does. We can program in some speed tables later if we feel like it. So that's about it. We're all set. The last step now is we're going to take it back into the, the workshop and uh, put the couplers on, put the screws in, and we'll be done with it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it informational. Uh, let me know if there's other things you'd like to see in the future, whether about the layout, how-tos, anything like that, and we will cover that together. Uh, if you're not, be sure, be sure to subscribe to my coffee and uh, see these videos first, get some exclusive behind the scenes ones. There's an exclusive, very quick one up right now, uh, dealing with uh, another scale that I'm involved in behind the scenes that you guys haven't seen yet on this channel. Anyways, thank you for hanging out, and we will see you all soon. Alright guys, we got the sounds program the way that we want. Got couplers back on. No, I said this would be a later video, but I just love the sound of us too much to uh, make you guys wait any longer. As you can hear, there's cab chatter enabled. There's a bunch of other things enabled. Uh, one of the things is an auto throttle that I haven't turned on yet because I really actually need the whole layout running before I can do that, so we'll get there. Um, but sounds great. We got the right prime mover selected. We have the right bell. And we have the right horn. I have to tell you that for that one speaker, this is incredibly loud, and that horn is loud in here. And it's great. Absolutely love it. So we'll do a quick run by it so you guys can see it and uh, hope you enjoy it. Okay, that's 1733-173.